It's the launch that was hinted at and everyone was getting excited. And then when the full reveal came about, everyone lost their minds, <laughs> including myself. Today, we're gonna to be doing a deep dive into the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. I do have two of them to show you today. And I'm really looking again to do a very full in-depth review on these. We're going to be doing two looks with each palette. I am going to make sure to use synthetic brushes in one look and real hair brushes in another so that we can really see how these formulas work. And that's really what this is about to me is like seeing if the value is here in these formulas that Lisa is bringing to us. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real, real honest, real relatable and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. So you don't miss out on future videos. But also, if we haven't met before, you might not know that I am a huge super fan of not only Lisa Eldridge makeup, but Lisa Eldridge herself. She's an amazing makeup artist. I really love her aesthetic. I really love her content here on YouTube. She has some really fun creative videos for those of us that are beauty enthusiasts. And ever since I tried my very first Lisa Eldridge lipstick, I was in love. I now have some of the Luxuriously Lucent, some of the True Velvet, the Insanely Saturated, Saturated. I have blushes, highlighters, all the things. And while I can say that maybe every experience hasn't been perfect, if you've been down that road with me, I will say that I really love like just about every single product. And I have to say that the customer service team is amazing, including in my experience with this order. And while I'm talking about this order, I do want to mention that I'm not sharing my entire haul in this video. I do have items that I purchased other than the eyeshadow palettes, but because I really want this video to be informative, but I don't want this video to be like 50 minutes long, I'm hoping that I can sort of like narrow it down. And so I'll have two videos. So there will be a video going up very shortly after this one does uh, with the rest of my haul, lip swatches of everything that I got, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna dive in right now. Do you wanna see which palettes I picked? Okay, so the eyeshadow palettes, let's take a look. So first of all, I do want to just give a little nod to the cute bag for this year's holiday launch. This is of course in the pompadour shade. I really love the velvety feel of this. It feels very luxe. I have to say, I kind of wish that there were a couple options this year. Uh, I missed I missed out and I don't know what happened in my order. I think maybe I didn't like add to bag or whatever, but the last holiday I missed out on getting a bag and I really wanted the green one. Was that last year? At any rate, whatever year it was, I really wanted the green one, but I do like this bag. And I was talking about customer service and I, went crazy and I did not realize that it was one bag per order. And I was so concerned that things were gonna like sell out before I was able to check out. So I wasn't doing multiple orders. And so for every three items I purchased, I added a bag. And at first in my cart, it looked like they were letting me do that for every three items. But then at checkout, I did not see that they charged me for every bag. It was like $25 a bag or something like that. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just like typing in my info, click, done, yay, got all my things, got my entire wish list. And then all of a sudden I'm like, why is that a lot more? Why is that a lot more than I thought it was? <laughs> and I went and I was like, oh, that's because I got charged a lot of money for bags. I was like, oh no. So I emailed the team and they were amazing and they refunded that. I was very grateful. I it was totally on me. It was totally on me. I just was in such a hurry. So thank you so much to the Lisa Eldridge team. At any rate, let's go ahead and look at these eyeshadows. Like I said, every time that I've had to reach out to customer service for whatever reason, or just with questions about products, they've been so incredibly helpful. And to me, that's like part of why I buy from a brand. The other reason I buy from a brand is partially because of beautiful packaging, like this compact. So that was one thing for me that I was really drawn to is how compact this compact is. So it's obviously very luxe, it feels, you know, really like not overly heavy but heavy enough to feel substantial you know what i mean i love i actually didn't see that i couldn't see it in the details when i was watching lisa's video uh i didn't see that it's like etched on the top and then it's smooth on the bottom so let's open this first one up so that you can see which one i got so i got cinnabar now this was my first pick because to spend $68 on an eyeshadow palette that I don't know how I'm going to feel about the formula, I wanted to make sure that it was shades that I would use a lot. And I don't know, right now with, with my rosy hair again, I was like, shoot. <laughs> I don't know if I would normally like wear these warm tones with my rosy hair a lot, but uh, this will fade out really quickly. So it's not really that big of a deal, but in my normal like everyday life when this is a little bit lighter and it's more of a rose gold or if I have my beigey blonde, 
I really love shades like this. And this is just for me a beautiful, like, not just every day, but every occasion palette. I think, or at least I'm hoping, that we can build some high drama and then also soft looks. And by the way, if you know me, you know that when I'm doing an eyeshadow review, especially with like a collection of shades like this, I try to see just how versatile a palette is. So we're gonna try to do a very light, soft look and then see just how like deep and high glam we can get with both of the palettes. So I also was trying to get as many of the formulas as I could by purchasing just two palettes. I'll be honest, I would have loved to have like three or four of them, but I needed to like rein it in a little bit. So I decided to go with this one and then the next one because I have all of the formulas but one, and that's just because that one is only in one of the palettes. So Cinnabar it is, we're gonna dive into that in just a moment. So then I also decided to pick up, you're probably not surprised at all. I think some people thought I was going to get Muse because it's like rosy, but I do have a lot of those shades. So you'll know that my like second string favorite colors are greens. And so of course I had to get the Sorcery palette. I'll be honest, I did think about picking up a single shadow to pop out uh, the blue shade, which is Swan Song. Cause so I was like, blue is not in my everyday wheelhouse. But this blue, when I saw it swatched, it's just so beautiful. Like if I'm gonna have a blue that's not like a navy matte, this is the blue that I want. This is gorgeous. I cannot wait to try it out. We're going to be trying it out today. Just a little spoiler right there. Of course, I'm gonna have to use the blue. So I, again, I was trying to like limit, but I did think about buying an individual shadow because of course, Lisa is offering all of these shades as singles, which is really great if you tend to be someone who maybe, you know, buys a palette and there's one shadow that you pan really quickly and you're like, shoot, like I, that's a mainstay for me in this palette. And now I don't reach for it because I can't use that shade anymore. So I think that's a really nice option. And of course you are able to like pop these out to be able to mix and match and customize as you go. I know that a lot of people are up in arms about not being able to get the component itself, the compact, because if this truly is like a customizable option, you kind of need an empty palette. I, for me, because I am a single eyeshadow lover, it's not a big deal for me to like have other single shadows in a bigger palette. It's not really a thing, but I don't think that the main Lisa Eldridge demographic is all that into like single shadows and like popping out things. So that's just for me, like the main everyday makeup wear that loves Lisa, I think isn't into that. Now makeup artists, a lot of us have single shadows that we have in palettes and we curate, you know, for each job we're going on to. So Lisa had talked about that, you know, in her video and that's one of the reasons why she did this. But I think that it does miss the mark for a lot of people. It doesn't concern me. <laughs> The reason I didn't get that single shadow was like, okay, that's $16 and that just adds a lot. It is definitely more economic to buy the palette. You get a lot better cost per gram, which by the way, I'm also going to be going into a deep dive of the cost of these versus some other brands and things towards the end of this video. And I will have everything timestamped below so that you can check that out. Again, I'm trying to be informative, but also not too lengthy. And so hopefully you can pop around to the looks that you're wanting to see, to the items that you're wanting to see. And if you wanna see that cost information at the end, we're gonna go into that. But I know that we're all excited to see these formulas perform. So we're gonna do that right now. I do also wanna say, please excuse the fact that I don't have a lot of makeup on right now because I'm gonna to have to just wipe this eyeshadow off and start again. So I didn't really want to pop on a lot. I do have the Lisa Eldred Seamless Skin Foundation on today, but I did want something fairly sheer. So I actually cocktailed about two parts of the Niacinamide Dew Drops from Glow Recipe in with the foundation just for more of like a tinted moisturizer and then popped on a little concealer and just a tish of bronzer. I'm actually going to use the lip colors that I got as blushes in the video you will be able to see after this one. Uh, so I don't have any blush on right now. So please excuse the semi-naked face, but today it's all about the eyeshadow. So come on in, we're gonna get this started. Okay, I wanted to get you nice and close so that you could really see the results of these shadows. I think obviously we'll start with our softer look and I'm gonna start using real hair brushes. So there is only one true matte in this palette. So I'm hoping that we can like get this to be a fairly light shade. <laughs> we will see. I'm not sure that troubadour shade, that matte shade is pretty intense, but we're gonna see. We're gonna see how we can push the limits of this palette only having six shades. You know that like, 
six shades is limiting for me, but we're gonna totally see how versatile this can be on its own without having to like swap out shades. So I think since we're doing this fairly soft, I'm going to start out with the shimmer shade. So I'm gonna grab one of my all-time favorite brushes. This is the Wayne Goss 18. Wayne doesn't make this anymore, but I do really love this one. So we're gonna go into the shade Mage, and this is a metallic. I will say one thing, and hopefully you can pick it up in the swatches, but I'm not sure if it's gonna show. It has like multi-reflex in it, like almost like a a blue, it had a bit of, you know, obviously silver reflect to it, very like multicolored. So I'm gonna go through with a dry brush and we're just gonna pop this in on the inner corner. Yeah, I mean, even on the eye right now, I can see the texture of this. And I don't mean like, ooh, it's making my eyelids look creepy. I mean like, I can see like flex. It's not glittery, but it is sort of flecky. I am just wondering how this is going to work wet. Like if it's going to get more intense. Lisa never talked about using these wet in her video, but I'm gonna give it a go because why not? So I'm just gonna load that up a little bit more onto the brush. She obviously did talk about using them with a finger and that's gonna give you more intensity, which totally makes sense. I'm kind of like team no finger though. So uh, I think the closest, I, I will do it on this side just to see, like I'm gonna tap another color on the outer corner, but in reality, I would, I'm just not one to like use my fingers. It's just not accurate enough. Okay, I do get more, yeah, that's definitely more reflective. Before, I would say that this shade, and it's out of this palette, this is the least metallic of the metallics. So you have four metallics in this palette and this is the least like metallic-y of them all. But I think, so this is not a shade that I would normally go towards, I'm just gonna be honest. But I think for a, if you want to sort of tiptoe into silvers, but let's say you have a warm skin tone and you feel like silver looks really odd on you, this is a great option because it's definitely that like almost like olive -y leaning pewter shade. So, I, I mean, I think it's a very flattering shade for being sort of a silver. I'm just not, I'm just not living that silver life, but it is a more flattering silver. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the shade. Jeremy just messaged me for a coffee order. Hold on. Okay, now that caffeination is in order, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and take the shade Grotto, which is another metallic shade. I should probably just like point these out. This is Mage, this is the one that I just put on the inner corner, and this is Grotto. This is the one that we're gonna be popping into next. Excited to try this. So I'm gonna start with it on a brush, just so that we can see, just on um, a dry brush, and then we can kind of see what we can get out of a brush. These shadows feel very creamy. I think that all of the formulas in here feel fairly thin. Uh, the more olive shade, Madrigal, that like sort of like old gold meets olive, that one is a little bit thicker, but the rest of these feel very thin. And I mean, not like overly thin, even the thick one isn't like, oh my God, like chunky. But I think that that texture is what's going to lend itself to being very friendly towards skin texture. The texture of the shadows, that thin texture is gonna be what lends itself towards being non-enhancing on skin texture. Wow, I don't. I even tried to simplify it there and I don't even think I did it. So that's really pretty. It's, it's softer. I did find when I was doing the swatches that that shade is the most sheer of them. Lisa described all of the mattes as densely packed full coverage. She said you can dust it on with a brush for a wash of shine or use fingers for intense payoff. I don't think think I would personally not consider this shade, this grotto shade as full coverage, unless you like super build it up. And to me, like if I have to really build up a shadow, it's not full coverage. It's more like medium. So now I'm gonna take my finger and see if I can just like get this a little bit more. All right, I just zoomed you in like the one extra inch. <laughs> <laughs> that I can get out of this lens. So I don't know if you can see, but this where I packed on with a finger, it's definitely more coverage. It has more shine. It has definitely more depth to it. And then in the middle, it's, it's still pretty. It's just 
softer. Oh yeah, like even here you can kind of see that. And that's not just from the turn of my eye, that's definitely like the saturation of color on the lid. So I'm hoping that you can see, maybe not with the reflectivity of this, it really isn't like overly wham bam full coverage. It's beautiful. I just wouldn't consider this shade full coverage. So I'm not gonna lie, I feel like this shade reminds me of like a deeper version of my shade uh, Love's Been from Pretty For Your Face. I, I quickly, just really quickly, I'm not doing a ton of comparison swatches because I think it would just be kind of silly, but I do really quickly want to see how this compares to that. Okay, I wasn't, I wasn't too far off. Look, so this is the shade Grotto from Lisa's palette, and this is my shade that I collabed with with Pretty Sphere Face. That's Love's Been. So on the hand, it's different because Love's Been definitely has like more of a flip, but they have a little bit of that vibe. That would be a fun combo. Okay, now the moment of truth. Now we're gonna see just how like blendable this matte is. I'm gonna go in with a Wayne Goss number four brush. It's a blender, but it's like a small blender just so that we can get a little bit of accuracy. And I'm just going to like dip the tip of the brush, like just a little boop, and then we'll see if we can like shear this out. So Lisa mentioned that this seamless matte formula actually has a small level of luminosity to it because it has like tiny, tiny micro pearl added to it, like just enough to give it, you know, a flattering look, but also to help with blendability. You know that if you have like a super saturated, I don't wanna say dusty matte, but you know, more of that like super powder formula, it can tend to be a little bit hard to blend on the eye. So I think that she just really did that to give that like flattering creamy feel. And I will tell you, this feels incredibly creamy. It doesn't feel like a powder shadow. It definitely feels more of like a cream to powder feel. I know that she says that the uh, velvet, the velvet is more of that cream feel, but this one feels very creamy. And I think actually we're doing a pretty good job here of blending this out. And it definitely does have a little bit of more of like a satin feel to it. Obviously I kind of like worked it into the shimmer shades, the metallic shades, but I'm okay with that. It just gives enough of that definition. I mean, this is not the palette to get if you're wanting like light airy looks, obviously. You're probably looking for a little bit of that like grungy jewel tone vibe. You know, Lisa said that this color story was really inspired by, you know, the medieval time period, like alchemy and magic and just, you know, the tales and stories from that. And, you know, if you think about like clothing, costuming from back then, it definitely had like, you know, a lot of these tones involved. So this is not like a sheer wispy ethereal palette by any means, but I think you can still get a fairly light eye look. I'm gonna take a Wayne Goss pencil brush. This is the 20 and we're just gonna run a little bit of that troubadour shade on the lower lash line as well, but not a lot, cause you know, it does have some pigment to it. I'm just looking to give a bit of definition. And I do have just the tiniest bit of fallout. I think that that's from using that grotto shade with my finger. I think that it just like popped a little bit down, but it's nothing that probably won't sweep away. All right, when I went through with that initial made shade, I did get a little bit of it on my lower like inner corner, just from the brush. It wasn't like fallout, I just like, painted outside the line. So now I wanted to like clean it up, brighten it up so that we can really take advantage of this beautiful luminous shade. So this is the shade Mercurial. I just need to show you a finger swatch of this shade. I don't think it like, it didn't show up on the arm. Hopefully, let me like turn this down a little bit, but I mean, look how flippin' metallic that is. Oh, it's so pretty. And ah, I don't think, I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up. It has, this, I mean, it's not a unique shade, I don't think by any means, but it is a very beautiful shade. You know, being a single shadow lover, being one who loves indie makeup, I think that the shade of this is something that you can find in other brands, but the texture is incredibly smooth. So this has an almost violet base. I would say it's almost like a mauve violet base. And then it has like silver, some blue green, some, Lavender maybe, it, it's really beautiful. I mean, it looks wet, like look at that. Ooh, I mean, that's beautiful. It's the formula of this, not necessarily the shade of it that I think is hopefully gonna make it unique. It, it looks gorgeous. This is when, <laughs> this is when I wish I had like a really teeny tiny finger. 
<laughs> so that I could just like pack it on. Uh, alas, I do not, or thankfully I do not, depending on how you wanna look at that. So what can I take here? Okay, I've got this refer brush. It is stained, but it's clean. This is the number three brush. And let's go ahead and just take this and pop it on the inner corner. And I think I'm gonna do like the, you know, kind of like inner corner, but also the lower lash line just a little bit. Oh my gosh. Okay, this shade is really pretty. I'm not gonna lie, like the minute I swatched this, I was like, mm, maybe I wanna go back and buy all of the luminous shades. <laughs> I will say though, I did see, and I'm curious if a lot of people um, decided to pass on getting the curated palette and mostly got single shadows because uh, when I was just going online and kind of like doing some research for this video, I noticed that a lot of the single shadows are out of stock already. So that could be honestly though, the brand not anticipating that a lot of people would want just the single shadows. Obviously they're, you know, maybe thinking that people are gonna wanna like order them when they run out or things like that. So maybe they just didn't have a large stock, but I did notice that a lot of them are out of stock. Can, I hope you can see how pretty that is. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is a fairly light look if you are, you know, into those like murky tones. If you got this and you're like, oh, I love these colors, but I just don't want it to be like Poof, today. You know, like let's say you wanna travel, you feel like all of what you're wearing is gonna be going with this vibe. You could take this and I think that, you know, you can definitely get a still somewhat light look out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on some mascara quick so we can see the finished look. Okay, there is a quick look at our first look, the lighter side of the sorcery palette, if you will. I didn't pop on a lot of mascara because obviously I'm gonna have to wipe this off in just a moment to celebrate Cinnabar, but I did want you to get the full effect and I do really like it. It's very shimmery, very like grungy ethereal, if you could do that. Like it's so luminous that I think that even though the colors are darker, it still gives off a lighter vibe. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's go ahead and give off a darker vibe. Let's go for deep, for smoky, for jewel toned, all the things on this side. I'm really excited. And this is the side that we're gonna use synthetic brushes on so I'll be able to like see if I feel like there's a difference. And I realized why I hemmed and hawed about Mercurial, this luminous one, I didn't really talk about how Lisa described it. She says that it is medium payoff in a semi-transparent base. It's a wet look with a finger or with a brush, it gives a sparkle. I personally think I still got a fairly wet look from that, but I was really more like, packing it on as opposed to like something that you're, you know, blending back and forth. So I think that's when you'd get just more of that like sheer shimmer. All right, of course, we're gonna have to use Troubadour again, that one matte. Now I'm going through with a Lara Faye E13 brush. I really like this set of brushes. Uh, I know that this is a fairly small blending brush, but I just know that, you know, that gives me the ability to really like lay this on. I mean, look how pigmented that is. Like this is how much we were able to share it out on this side look how pigmented it is on there. Like you can definitely do a lot with this one shade. Uh, as I was saying, I can build this up as much as I want, but it's also small enough that I can really start like feathering the edges and just get it blended out quite a bit more. Okay, I am very happy with that. I am going to say, I'm going to say right now that this is definitely a very beautiful matte formula because it is super blendable, super buttery. It has a lot of pigment. Like I've talked about sometimes with Natasha's really creamy mattes that they're beautiful, they're pigmented, but sometimes they can end up being a little bit hard to get like a smooth end result with. They can be just a little bit harder to like get that blend from. And it's just because there's like so much saturated pigment in them, I think. At least I've had a little bit of a hard time with them before. I really need to like make sure to lay down something else first to be able to blend over the top. And with this, I didn't have to do that at all. So I really like this. So I am going to add just a little bit onto the outer corner here because I want to see, I'm gonna use uh, that shade, Swan Song. I'm gonna use the blue over like most of the lid, but I wanna see how the metallics like layer over mattes, just to see if there's any depth difference, if we, you know, still kinda see some of the like underlying shade come through, if we, you know, can kinda get like that layered effect, we'll have to see. Okay, I'm gonna go through with the Spectrum and KJH number 12. We're gonna start with that sorcery shade on the outer corner. Now, this is probably the least sheeny of the metallics. I mean, it has a luminosity to it, but it's not like incredibly foiled. Well, okay, I guess 
they're out there blowing leaves or doing something, so I'm so sorry, but <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that. So this, unless you like really build it up, so I think if you use a finger or you really pack it on with a brush, you can see more of the luminosity, but it's not exactly like that, like really foiled feel, in my opinion. So it looks really beautiful though. So now I'm gonna start working that over the lid. Okay, that actually packed on pretty well. At first, when I put it on, I was like, oh, it's definitely not as intense as it is where I put the mat down, but it's actually, it's actually pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna try to like pop a little bit on with my finger just to kind of see. I am getting a little bit of fallout, but I would never do a deep navy smoky eye on my eyes after I do my complexion, like ever. <laughs> Actually, I think it's the same. I think it's the same amount of intensity for me using a dense yet slightly toothy brush as it is using my finger. But I'll be honest, like if I'm wearing a blue look, I want something that has some luminosity and reflectivity, but isn't like, like aluminum foil blue. <laughs> You know, like I don't want it to be like metallic robot girl blue. I think that this is the way that I like to wear a blue shadow. So let me go ahead and now, of course, we're gonna have to use Madrigal. I cannot not use this beautiful shade here. This is actually a concealer brush from Sigma. This is the F70. We're gonna see how it picks up on this brush. It might not be, it might almost be like too flatly packed, but we're gonna give it a go. And that's gonna be what we put on this inner corner. Now this, like I mentioned, I think I mentioned it when I was talking about the palette, that I feel like this is the most thick feeling metallic in this palette. Like it has a little bit more of that like almost creamy, thicker feel. This definitely has more like sparkle to it as well. Like it has more like tiny little micro glitters. And I'm just kind of like shimmying my brush there to blend the two together. And then usually what I do is I kind of come back with the first color and then I just kind of like pop that on too. Yeah, this color is much more reflective because it has those little like micro shimmers. It's not even the base of the shadow, it's just that there's more like little micro glitters in it. How many times can I say micro glitters? So I'm just taking that original crease brush and just blending this a little bit. I don't have anything on the brush right now. It's just to kind of like soften that edge. Okay, now that I am like seeing this eye, I want to build up the intensity in the crease just a little bit more. All right, now taking a Sigma E30 brush, we're gonna go full tilt into Troubadour and then really smoke out the lash line. So all I did was like wiped off my brush once I have my shadow applied and then I'm just going along the edge uh, a little bit further away from my lashes just to kind of like blur this out. This is obviously more than maybe what some people would do, but I'm really, again, just trying to like push those limits. I did get fallout though from both the uh, green shade, the magical shade, and then also the blue shimmer. So the shimmers did give me a bit of fallout, but like I said, again, this is not an eye look that I would do like after I've done my foundation personally. Okay, so now that I have <laughs> tried to clean up that under eye situation with a little bit of concealer, I just wiped off my whole under eye and then just popped on some more concealer. I mean, really the only inner corner though is going to be that uh, mercurial shade. Have I used every shade in this palette? Yeah, I have. So well, let's just go ahead and pop that one back in there. I'm gonna go ahead and wet my brush this time for that luminous formula though, just to see if it really gives us any difference. Yeah, I mean, it definitely intensified it because both of these have that shade coming in as far, but you definitely see that like wet look with this side. I will say though, I feel like the base of this is a little dark for an inner corner using it wet, in my personal opinion, because it starts to make the inner socket look a little like sunken in. It's bright, it's shiny because of the like sparkle in it, but that base shade gets a lot deeper when you do it wet. Like if you can see here, like it looks great in the light, but if I turn it, I feel like my inner corner looks a lot darker. So probably won't use this one wet for that. Now wet on the lid, that's gonna look freaking amazing. So I'm really excited for that, but I won't use it wet on my inner corner. That's just me personally. All right, mascara. All right, final look 
of our deep smoky jewel toned, I definitely feel like very much like I could be like a wizard or a witch or something. I'm feeling some like witchy vibes right now. Like I think this definitely has that like magic, madrigal vibe to it. I, I really like this. I personally would probably add a little bit of like waterline liner either with a black or like with a fun navy or something just to like really drive it home. But since I'm just about to wash this off, I don't wanna have to deal with trying to clean out my waterline. So I hope you understand. All right, yeah, so I feel like here now you can definitely see the difference in like drama, in depth from this. I like both of these looks. I would wear both of these. Like I would wear both of these every day, but that's just me. So. A little bit of a rundown on this palette. I think it's beautiful. I do personally, for my own taste, right? For my own taste, I wish that the Mage shade was something else, but that's just me. That's just because this isn't a shade that I'll go to a lot. And honestly, if you look here, I mean, now I'm a little bit more zoomed out, but can you really even tell a difference? Like this is that, uh, I keep forgetting the name, Mercurial. So this is the Mage and then this is uh, Grotto. And I feel like, I mean, they definitely have a difference, but they're close-ish. And I feel like when you have six shadows, you probably shouldn't have any of them be close-ish. They should be different enough Tonally, technically they are. I, and it could just be that I blended them so much together that maybe I'm just not seeing like the big difference. They, they are different, they are different. Obviously this one has a bit more of sheen and shift. This one has more upright, upright, downright sparkle. So it has a little bit more sparkles to it. And you know, this leans towards that like mm, olive inspired pewter shade. And then this is definitely, you know, more of that like shift of like greeny teal. They're very pretty. I think it's the madrigal shade that everyone is kind of like ah about, which it's beautiful. I have a lot of greens that are like this. I do think that this has a very interesting texture to it because it has that green base, but it has so much of that like old gold meets green sparkle to it. If you are like, gosh, I, I always feel like I wanna wear like a little bit of a sparkly shadow and then when I do it, I just feel like it's too much or I feel like, I mean, I think you can wear straight up glitter at any age, but if you sort of feel like it's like out of your element for your age, for your skin texture, whatever it might be, I think that you would enjoy this. If you're looking for a little bit more of that pop but you don't wanna go crazy with it, I think this is great. This blue shade, surprisingly, is like one of my favorites out of this palette because it is just a gorgeous, Everything about it from the finish, the shade, everything is beautiful. It blended out really nice. I think the matte, the matte is where it's at. The matte is where it's at. I'm very excited to dive into Cinnabar because I feel like I'm really excited to try out those mattes. So I definitely had fun with this one. Hopefully my thoughts were helpful to you. Again, this is all first impressions. I will you know, update you more down the road, but let's go ahead and get into Cinnabar. All right, now it is time for Cinnabar to take the stage. I am so excited to use this one. I knew, I knew right away, right away when Lisa said, oh, this is Cinnabar. And I was like, well, I'm getting it because I love the Velvet Cinnabar lipstick. It is just such an amazing shade that is so flattering on everyone. And honestly, I feel like this is the same. Now, I love a good like bronzy, coppery, warm, toasty moment, which is exactly what you get in here. I think that this is gonna be flattering on everybody. I think this will be especially beautiful on blue eyes though. Ooh, I just cannot wait to dive into this one. Now, Lisa said, just like the Cinnabar lipstick, that this is inspired by those beautiful, ancient earth source pigments that people were using in makeup. They were using it in things like pottery and other arts. So you just definitely get that rich earthy vibe from this. And I'm excited because we have two formulas in here that we weren't able to experience in the last palette. We have the velvet matte, which I'm really excited to try out. And then we also have the top coat. Now. I'm just gonna be honest right away, this top coat is not really usually my jam. It's not a formula that I tend to use very much. I'll be interested to see how this is, but again, if I could have changed anything about this palette so far, I would have like had something different in here because that's just not something I use. But who knows, maybe I will think it's lovely and amazing and I'll be using it all the time. That's exactly why we're doing these looks, right? So we're gonna go ahead and again, we're gonna do a softer look and then also do something more deep and dramatic. Let's get into it. 
All right, I'm gonna go in with the Refer 27 and the lightest matte shade in here. This is Raw Sienna. I think that this is a beautiful shade. Like, honestly, when I swatched this, I was like, there is just something about this shade that is so lovely. And again, I just feel like these feel so creamy. Now, I will say this shade is kicking up in the pan a little bit more than Troubadour did. That could just be because of the, you know, like fluffy nature of this refer brush. But I wanted to pull out, I feel like I was mostly using Wayne Goss in the last look. Um, that's just because that's who I have most of my natural hair brushes from, but I wanna pull out a couple other brands. So I wanted to pull out something just nice and fluffy, something that we can just get a nice wash of color on the lid. Oh, this shade, and maybe you could see it in the swatch, but this shade definitely has that level of luminosity that Lisa was talking about in her video right away when I swatched it. It just looks like hydrated. It looks hydrated. Yep, it's not like a dry matte. It has that little bit of pearl to it. It's not sparkly, like you're not gonna see glitters in this, but it does have a nice little bit of pearl to it. I do also just wanna say I have a feeling that my skin might just look a bit more textured than it did in the last uh, two looks, just because I had to like take off that makeup, reapply makeup, like sometimes skin just gets angry when you do that. So if it seems like my skin has a bit more texture, it's probably just because my eyelids are a bit angry at me. All right, so you can see, I mean, this would be beautiful. You could just like swipe this all over, pop on one of these other shades in here. You could do, you know, like a cream shadow if you wanted, like this would just be a lovely shade. And I think that this shade would still be a nice shade on someone with, you know, like tan skin. I would, I would, honestly, I think even on deep skin because it has this really rich creaminess, it isn't gonna look super chalky. I mean, I'll be curious to see what it looks like on deeper skin tones, but I feel like just because of this formula, you're gonna get like a nice blend out of this. This could almost be like a little bit of a highlight shade and still, again, not look chalky, which is great. All right, taking a Refer 2 brush, we're gonna go into Bronzite. This is a metallic formula. I feel like when I swatched this palette next to the Sorcery palette, I felt like both of the metallics in this palette are a little bit thicker feeling, a little bit thicker, much more metallic looking. I'm sure you saw that in the swatch. So I don't necessarily think that every single shade in each formula is going to have technically the exact same formula. You know what I mean? Because they feel very different, like, even in the last palette, I felt like all three shades had slightly different textures. So I don't know. I think that that looping them all into one category can be a little bit misleading, but also, you know, it's nice of her to just even like categorize them at all because some brands just basically have shimmer and matte. So there you can see that bronzite shade put on with a brush. Now I'm going to do the same. I'm gonna try to pop a little bit on with my finger on the outer corner to see if it like gets more like foiled, more molten. Yeah, I mean, I think you get a bit more intensity with that, but you still get a lot of intensity just on the brush. I'm just gonna kind of like blur this out into nothing on the edge. All right, that looks lovely. I love this shade. I mean, I think that the shade is just so pretty, but I do think that it's gonna look really great on blue eyes. So now let's go through and we'll run something through the lower lash line. I think I'm gonna go through with this velvet shade. This will be the first time we try it. Now, I don't by any means think that the lash line is the best way to like <laughs> see a formula, but I do want something just a little bit deeper on the lash line. So that's gonna be where I use this one. I'll use it on the other side as well. So I'm just gonna do a little bit. Now I have to say when I swatched the shade, I really was surprised at the color of the swatch, like the saturation of pigment versus what the pan looks like because it's a lot lighter, I feel like, in the swatch and even here than it is in the pan. Like you have to, you know, build it up a bit more to be able to get that super saturated color, but you can definitely do it. It's just right away, I feel like it's a little lighter than what I had anticipated. Okay, that just gives us like a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna leave that there. It's soft, simple, totally easy. The thing is, is I wanna try this top coat. So again, this is not something that I really use that much, like ever. This is one of those like, almost like the Charlotte Tilbury, uh, also Wayne Goss has a formula kind of like this. I just, 
this is like just sparkle. It's just sparkle and a lot of times I feel like that just looks like I accidentally had fallout. So it's not really my jam. Like I feel like I'd have to really, really pack it on a lot to get what I wanna see from it. I don't know, we're gonna see here. I'm just taking the little flat definer from um, that travel set that Sonia G did. Can't remember the name of it, but I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna pack it on. Ooh, I really, I'm scared because I don't wanna get like crazy tons of fallout. Sorry if you couldn't, sorry if you couldn't say anything just then. I'm like, I'm working in the danger zone, you know, trying to get it on without like getting glitter everywhere. Okay. It's okay. I knew, I knew going into this that this was not gonna be a shade that I would be like, yeah, love it. I wish it had just a little bit more of a base color. And I think that the luster is more what I would want to see. And like I said, I think that's only in one of the palettes. I think it's great if you like sparkle but don't love glitter and you want a little pop. I just don't, I just don't know when I would wear this. So I'm gonna take it on my finger and try to pop it over the metallic. Okay, I can actually see that. I wasn't sure. I was like, I'm probably not even gonna see this over the shade. Can you see? Oh, look at that. Okay, I think that that like added a bit of a pop to the center of the eyelid. That's probably gonna be the only way that I use this. I didn't, I didn't get a lot of fallout from that just now. I do feel like I got fallout when I was trying very, very carefully to put it on my inner corner. But again, anytime I'm using like shimmer or sparkle, I'm usually going to be doing my eyes first and then my complexion last, so. Okay, this is really a very Kelly everyday look. Like this is something that I would put on when I just want to feel like a little bit enhanced, but it's like no brainer, you know, something that's gonna kind of go with everything, something that would get me out the door quick. This is truly like something that I would honestly pick out and wear myself other than the inner corner. I would want something just a little lighter and a little brighter than what's in this palette and not quite so like mini shimmery, but that's just me. All right, now let's move on to this side. We're gonna do something more dramatic. Okay, so now for this side, we're gonna start with that deep ogre shade. This is the velvet. I want to put this like through the crease so we can really see how it builds, how it blends. I think we need a bit more surface area to work on to really be able to tell. Oh yeah, this feels very creamy. So this shade is really like the eyeshadow form of Velvet Cinnabar lipstick. I mean, there's not as much red in this one, but it's definitely, it could, they could be sisters. Okay, I, I can't lie. <sighs> this is definitely one of the better matte formulas I have ever used, like ever. I'm, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it right now. Okay, so I think I could probably even build this up even more. I'm gonna see like just how deep I can get this. So the nice thing about this though is even as I build it up, it still stays really smooth. It's not getting patchy at all. And I mean, I don't have like, the youngest chickadee eyelids anymore. You know, I'm 41, <laughs> they've lived some life. So sometimes there's like skipping, there's like a spot that's angry at me that day and it doesn't wanna take color, you know how it goes. So I'm not getting any of that right now. All right, now let's take Lost Summer. That's this beautiful coppery shade. I am going to see, I'm trying it on a Makeup Geek uh, foiled shadow brush. It's just not, it's not wanting to pick up so much on this one, let me see. Okay, that's not my favorite finish. Like using this brush, it just looks like, it looks sparkly, but it doesn't look near as like wet and foiled as it did in the arm swatch. So let's try our finger. Uh, honestly, I might pull out like a little, I always call them spatulas, <laughs> but I guess, I guess the classier term is silicone applicator. You know what, actually, I have not done a shade in this palette wet yet, so let's go ahead and try that. I'm just gonna use some Fix Plus, which by the way, I'm sorry if I didn't say it, that's what I've been using this whole time. Okay, that brought the, it brought the color intensity even more and it made it slightly more foiled. I'm just not getting, I'm just not getting quite what I was really excited for, oh, there we go. Okay, that's, that's it. 
that's, that took a lot of work though. I don't think it would really take that. I think what I would probably do is put it on with a wet brush and then just like tamp into it with my finger a little bit just to like smooth that down. It wasn't chunky at all. It's just like, I want molten. Like I want this to be like, I liquefied a penny and like put it on my eye. That's what I wanted. I got it now, so I really, <laughs> I really like that. But I will say I definitely got some fallout from that little play fest. All right, now we're gonna take the deepest shade in the palette, that is Fired Earth. We're going back to the Seamless Matte formula. And I'm just gonna do, kinda wanna make this like a halo eye, like a little bit depthy. You know what, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make the inner and outer corner deeper. I know that most people like, most people when they do a halo eye, it's a little bit more of like a rounded shape. The only problem I have with that is that just doesn't work for my eye shape. I, I don't know, it's not necessarily a halo eye, but whatever it is, that's what we're doing. This combination, this is just giving me like, like cinnamon hot cocoa vibes. Oh, this is like, this might be the palette I wear to Thanksgiving. Okay, I'm just gonna take this BK A502 brush and we're gonna go into raw sienna and just like, just give a little bit of a blur right here to that inner corner. I don't even, I mean, honestly, this shadow, like I feel like it looks like two different shades because it blended so nicely. Like I love the you know, kind of like warmth that comes out in that deep ochre shade when you blend it out more, but just for kicks and giggles, I'm just gonna like use this raw sienna and like buff this out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, going back into Fired Earth and we're just gonna run that under the lash line. And then I'm gonna pop that Lost Summer shade right in the middle. This is the point in the video where I'm tired of grabbing like new brushes, so I'm just using that same brush I don't know. Oh yeah, it's fine. Ooh, got a little low with that, but that's okay. Okay, I did color outside the lines a little too much with that uh, Lost Summer shade. So I went through with a little concealer to kind of work as an eraser. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, now it looks more like blush. So I also I also had so much fallout. I, I don't know if it's just because I'm experimenting and I'm trying all different brushes and I'm using my fingers, but I have gotten a decent bit of fallout from this, which I've only watched one review on these shadow palettes. Uh, it was actually on the Sorcery palette because I really wanted to get like my own opinion, but um, that was Tara Lynn, by the way. And she said that she didn't get any fallout at all. So I don't know, but I definitely did, which I don't care because I always do my eye makeup first, usually unless I'm using cream shadows, so it's not really a big deal. But we're gonna go ahead and throw on some mascara. I definitely would love to pop like a copper liner again inside the waterline. I think that could be really cute, but I'm gonna actually end up washing this off one more time. I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute, but let me go ahead and put my mascara on. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out so that we can see. I'm gonna take my little clips out. By the way, aren't these cute? I don't know if you can see these. Let me try not to pull out all my hair. So they're like tortoise shell and they're rose gold. Ah, they're from Kitsch. I will link them down below if I can find them. Okay, so here we have the final looks. I love both of these, honestly. This is like the perfect Kelly palette if it weren't for this top coat shade. If it weren't for this top coat shade. So we all know how I feel about the top coat shade, right? Like it, it's a, it's a, I don't need it for me. It's also a, I don't, I don't think that most people need it. <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to let me know. I would actually really love to know for those of you that love a top coat shade like this, you love that like just shimmer, but nothing else. Leave a comment down below because I would really be curious, like sound off for me. Now, some other comments that I have just a little like if I could change anything, right? So let's take a look at these two shimmers or metallics. So we have Lost Summer, which is the more coppery shade. And then we have Bronzite, right? So Bronzite's on this side and Lost Summer is on this side. When you have only six shadows, when you only have six shadows, Okay, hold on. First, I love both of these shades. I think they're both amazing. They're both creamy, they're rich. Yes, I will probably use these wet. I just more so because I'm not team finger. If you are team finger, I think you're gonna just boom, pop these on and it's gonna be like, whoa, like blow your skirt up. 
But for me, since I'm not, I will probably use them wet just to get a little bit more of that foil. I love the shade of both of these. If this was in like a 12 pan, I would like to have both of these in here. But this is a six pan and I just feel like what I think needed to happen is one of these, probably bronzite. I, I feel like one needed to be a little bit lighter. You need to have a little bit lighter shade in here because, <sighs> need, I would like to have a little bit lighter shade because first of all, there's no inner corner highlight in here when you look at it, I mean, other than this, you know, this one here, which I guess you can use that, but I would personally like something that's a little bit lighter. And I also feel like a lot of people's everyday easy makeup might not actually be wearing a shimmer that's this dark. And you're not gonna put that topper shade on the lid as your main lid shade, unless it's like to top a matte, maybe. Like maybe you're gonna go through with raw sienna and then you're just gonna put sparkle on top of it, but that's different than a shimmer. So I also feel like though, if Lisa had done that, some people would be like, well, that's boring, <laughs> you know? So I can totally kind of see like why she didn't as well, because I know a lot of people already when they saw Cinnabar, they're like pretty, but I have it. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's why she didn't. So maybe at some point I'm gonna choose to invest, <laughs> invest the $16 in getting a different shade to pop into here. Now, the one formula that I don't have to show you is that luster formula. Now, Lisa describes this as densely packed tiny pearls, a smooth texture and pearlized sheen. And again, that's the one that's in the Muse palette, I believe. So right now the one luster shade is called Taffeta Fan and it's described as a delicate pearly champagne. That would probably go great in here. The other shade that I could maybe actually see in here would be Love in Venice and that's more of a like rose gold shade, which you know, I love a good rose gold. So can I just say like as a consumer who's shopping the website right now, trying to look at some of these single shadows, I'm a little bit annoyed that there aren't swatches of each shadow when you click on like the individual pans to buy refills. You have to go into the palette that it originally came in to be able to see the swatch in the palette swatches. Oh, you know what I just realized? There are actually no swatches. There are no swatches of the palettes on the website. So then that means you have to either go onto their Instagram because I do think that there are a good amount of swatches in their highlights, like in their um, story highlights, or you have to watch Lisa's video again, which I mean, fine, I love Lisa. I love listening to her talk. I love getting to see her beautiful face, but it's like, I would just like to see a swatch. I would like to see some swatches. So hopefully since they've done all of these pictures for like Instagram, maybe they can put some of these on the website. That's, that's just a little bit of a bummer. So, uh, that's, that's where I am on that. All right. So I feel like I just kind of like went off on a tangent there, but let's talk about these palettes. I mean, I kind of gave you my thoughts on them, but I do just want to give like an overall, like general review. I think that I chose the palettes that are perfect for me for right now. I think that Sorcery and Cinnabar were the two to start with for me to see how I feel. I think, you know, I got a nice wide variety of the shades possible. I think I also got to try most of the formulas. And I do think that, you know, it was really the color stories that spoke to me most. My third one was of course the Muse palette. And I know I keep bringing this up and here's the thing. Uh, in just researching this, I just realized that both of those singles that, that I just talked about that I could pop into Cinnabar, both of those singles are in that palette. And you have three more velvet shadows. I'm very tempted, I'm not gonna lie. I am very tempted to pick up that third palette. <sighs> I'm gonna have to do some soul searching on this one because at the end of the day, I, I like these palettes. I think that they have beautiful shades. I do think that, I do think that I'm drawn more to Cinnabar than I am to Sorcery, but that's just off of like first initial application, just doing two looks with each. And part of that I think is just because you only have one matte in Sorcery. So like if I change that up, honestly, I would probably take out Mage and set that one to the side and put in a different matte just so I'd have more options. <clears throat> that's, that's the problem with the six pan. Anything like a quad, a quint, a six pan, what would that be? A six slit, <laughs> six tuplet? <laughs> whatever that would be. You're just, you're just a little bit more limited, but it does also, you know, make it 
quicker to decide what the heck you're gonna do because you only have so many options. But you know, we're talking about $68 here and that's no joke. Like that is no joke. It's definitely something to think about. I might have to sit on that one for a moment. I'm gonna have to sit on that one. I'm gonna go back and watch Lisa's video to decide if I want to get that palette. We'll have to see because you know, if I bought two of the single shadows, that would be $32 right there. So at that point, I'm like, oh, but I really wanna try more of these mattes. I'm gonna say it. If I had an unlimited beauty budget, well, if I had an unlimited beauty budget, I'd just buy them all. But like, let's say I had 150 bucks to kick around right now, I would probably invest more in the matte shadows, like in these matte single shadows. And that, because if you know me, you know that I am a single shadow lover. I love to collect singles. I use singles a lot. I could honestly see doing that, like getting more of the mattes because they are gorgeous. They are stunning, beautiful formula. I really, really like them. I just know that there's sort of a high price point. And I'm also maybe just a little bit surprised that the refills for the mattes and the refills for the shimmers, the lusters are the same price, unless I missed out, but they are the same price because I feel like a lot of brands have different pricing, at least coming from the indie world, that's usually what happens because normally the pigments in shimmers are a little bit more expensive. But I have to say, these mattes are pretty dang amazing and miraculous. So maybe that's why. I hope you're enjoying these musings. Oh my gosh. Okay, so no pun intended, by the way, with muse. Okay, so before I get into cost analysis, prices compared to other brands, I did wanna say I am gonna do one more look and that's gonna be featured at the end of my haul video, all my lip swatches, what I got in the rest of my Lisa Eldridge order. So if you do wanna see that, that's gonna be in the next one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a look combining both palettes. So I have a fun 12 pan to get a little bit more creative with. I think that's gonna be fun and it'll be nice to have like another look to be able to show everybody. And honestly, another look so that I can like keep trying out these shadows. So again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that because that will be coming very soon after this one. But this is where I sign off for those of you that really aren't interested in the price breakdown. You aren't a like beauty nerd like me wanting to know price per gram, wanting to know like how it breaks down next to other brands. I am going to talk a little bit about like higher end brands. I'm also gonna go into a couple indie single shadow brands just so that you can kind of compare. So we're gonna get into that right now. But if you're gonna hit the road, I just wanna say I thank you so much for taking some time out of your day. So don't forget to like this video and I'll see you next time, hopefully in the next video. But for those of you who want to hear about the math, the money math of it all, stay tuned. I will say I was very surprised and we're gonna get into that right now. Okay, so let's break into this. I wish I had some glasses so that I could just like put them on and feel like super like smart or something. I don't know, anyway, I hope that this is helpful because it did take a minute to do, let me tell you. So the pricing on the Lisa Eldridge palettes is obviously $68 and there's 5.7 grams or 0.95 grams in each shade. So what that means is if you buy a palette of six shades, it comes down to $11.75 a gram. The individual like refills, if you will, are listed for $16 and that breaks down to $16.84 a gram. So also, if you were to go and pick six of your own shades, that's gonna be $98 and that's with no compact right now. And I know, I'm just gonna say this now, I think that I should have probably popped this in before. I know a lot of people are kind of up in arms about that as I kind of mentioned. For me, I see it. I mean, it would be very convenient, but I also see like Lisa as a makeup artist, as someone who has curated her aesthetic. I think it's sort of like, okay, this is the color story that I wanted to give you. I think she truly meant to just kind of like have those refill pans literally available for refill. But hey, by the way, if you happen to have more than one palette, then you can kind of like pop them out and mix and match. So that's the thing, but just know like that's, that's expensive to buy six shades. Yeah, okay. So let's look at some other shadows. I immediately thought of the Charlotte Tilbury hypnotizing pop shots. Now. I actually haven't felt those, but when I think of like the luminosity, the beautiful like texture of Lisa's shadows, I kind of thought like, oh, let's look in to see how much those are because obviously it's just one single shadow. So those are $34 for 1.2 grams and that's $28.33 a gram. <laughs> Yikes, that's really, really expensive. Now, 
if you get a quad of Charlotte Tilbury, because I wanted to have something that's like, you know, a little bit more comparable. So the quads have 5.2 grams in them and they are $53. So that breaks down to $10 and 19 cents a gram. So that is actually less expensive than what Lisa's are even in the palette. So it is just a little bit more expensive than the Charlotte Tilbury formula. I have to say I prefer Lisa's formula hands down to the Charlotte Tilbury. I will just say that right now. Um, that being said, I've only tried one. Oh no, I have two. I have two Charlotte Tilbury quads. They're nice, but honestly nothing to write home about. I prefer this formula better, mostly because of the mats. So then I know, let's just talk about this. The Hourglass Curator Shadows, that was like where you could buy the stupid palette and then you could buy the expensive singles. So those single shadows without a palette at all, the shadows were $29 a piece and there is one gram in each. So it's $29 a gram. That's just crazy. Now, here is one that I was kind of surprised by, Tom Ford. Okay, so if you buy a Tom Ford quad for $90, there's nine grams of product in there. So it's $10 a gram for a Tom Ford quad. So Lisa's formula is more expensive than Tom Ford. And that just kind of like hit me in my soul because Tom Ford eyeshadows are one of those where I'm like, uh-uh. Like I've only tried one quad. I was not that impressed. <laughs> like, so when I'm like, oh, okay. Like Lisa is more expensive than Tom. It kind of just like made me stop for a second. And I was like, hmm, okay. Now I also have been much happier with these palettes than I was with the Tom Ford one. But that was that was a little bit of like a, oh, okay. I'm starting to realize like how much money I spent on these eyeshadows. So let's talk about Natasha Denona because I do want to say, I feel like I like the Lisa Eldridge formula so far, right? First impressions. I like Lisa Eldridge's matte formulas better than Natasha's. Yeah, because I feel like they're even easier to use. They just, those creamier formulas, they're just like an easier cream formula. I've, I've just talked about this before where I feel like Natasha Denona's formulas, her creamy mattes and her cream to powders, I think sometimes are a little bit misleading. And also I think they're not quite so like user friendly. That's just, that's just my thought. So let's look at the mini quince. So the little minis that we all know and love, those are $27 and you get four grams. Each of them, by the way, is 0.8. So here's the other thing that I thought about that. So 0.8 in that tiny little mini, Lisa's singles are only 0.95. So it's not that much bigger. So if you think what a little mini, let me grab one out. Okay, so we've all seen this, right? Like, I think that sometimes pan size, like all of that can be a little bit misleading. So let's take a look at these. This is 0.8, this is 0.95. You pay $27 for this one, you pay $68 for this one. I, I just, I just wanna like let that sink in for a second. So when it comes down to the math on those, that is 6.75, that comes down to $6 and 75 cents a gram in the little like quince. That's, that's actually pretty reasonable. Now the larger five pans actually get even more reasonable. So that is $48 and you have 12.5 grams in there and that's $3 and 84 cents a gram. Now, granted, I don't feel like that many people have the larger five pans anymore, but I did just want to like say that to just to kind of like show and really show like, how close to this size Lisa's palettes really are. Okay, so then Pat McGrath, we of course have to look at Pat, right? So her quads, now I was looking on the website and the quads do vary a little bit from like $54 to like 58. I think even like the Astral one is a little bit more expensive, but if we go through and looking at a $54 quad, that's 4.4 grams and that comes down to $12.27 a gram. So a little bit more than Lisa's, but not that much more. Now, when we look at a mothership though, I was shocked. <laughs> when we look at a mothership, they're $128. And I've talked before how like, I am never, I'm never gonna buy a mothership for a full price $128. I just won't. I honestly probably won't even do it for the 20% off. Like it's just, it's just too steep for me. I just don't find it that worth it. So within there, you get 19 and a half grams 
and that actually breaks down to $6.56 a gram. I did the math several times because I was like, can that be right? So that's actually a little cheaper than the price of per gram in the Natasha Denona minis. And that's not quite half the price of what Lisa Eldridge is, but it's pretty close to half the price. So I just spent twice as much money per gram, almost twice as much money per gram on eyeshadows from Lisa Eldridge. And so did you, if you bought some. So then let's go into some indie. So you might be here, you might be like a luxury beauty lover. I am sort of like a little mix of everything. And I just wanted to bring up some single shadow brands. If you are someone that's thinking about like just buying some of these singles and having them to the side and not even getting a palette. So let's talk about Davina. You all know that I love Davina. I really like their mattes, but they are a very, very different formula than these. Davina are a little bit more powdery. They're a little bit more soft. They're, they're not creamy at all, but they are very buildable. They're really pretty. So those are $6 and I didn't see anywhere on the site listed like how much is in each. So I asked Deandra, the CEO and founder, and she said there's approximately 1.5 grams in those pans. Now I'm sure it depends on the formula, right? Because like when you're pressing them, everything. So 1.5 grams. Now that means that they are $4 a gram. It's a really decent price. Now, I wanted to look at the Aurora flares and those are actually $16. So it breaks down to the same price as Lisa Eldridge. Uh, no, it doesn't because those are 1.5 grams. So the prices on the screen are correct. I'm so sorry. So now obviously we're talking about like very different formulas, right? But the Aurora flares are the most expensive formula that Davina has as far as I know, I think so. Maybe there's something a little bit more expensive, but I think that that's the most expensive. And then there are some shimmers that are like somewhere in the middle. But I have to say, Davina also has some like standard shimmer shadows that are beautiful for $6. So there you go. Now let's talk about Sydney Grace. I love Sydney Grace mattes. I love their shimmers. I do think that, you know, Sydney Grace like press pigments, they don't have as much nuance as these metallics do from Lisa Eldridge, but they definitely have high metallic. So if like you're looking for high metallic, I think that, you know, you can get that from Sydney Grace very easily. I think most people would agree with me. So those are $6.25. You get 1.8 grams in the pan, and that breaks down to $3.47 a gram. Now they're mattes, which are also, again, very beautiful not as creamy, like there is just something, until you can try it and touch it yourself, you just can't understand. <laughs> like if you have felt the Natasha Denona creamy formulas, it's kind of along those lines, the Lisa Eldridge, but still, but still different. So <sighs> the Sydney Grace mattes are probably one of my very favorite like powder matte formulas. They're so good, they're so reliable. Those are actually $5.25. And again, you get 1.8 grams and that comes down to $2.92 a gram. I hope that just gives you kind of like a little price breakdown of brands that you've tried, maybe brands that have been on your wish list, maybe just like a little bit of a view of what you're spending your money on. Because I will say like, <sighs> once I saw this, I was like, I think I'm done. I think I'm done buying. I, I've got my two Lisa Eldridge palettes that I really like, and I think I'm going to be okay with that. And then after trying the formula and using it, now I'm kind of like, okay, I don't really want to pay a single shadow price, which I have paid $16 a shadow before. I have definitely paid $16 a shadow before, like on full price or close to full price indie brand shadows that are like really up there. Like I'm thinking like Touch of Glam, Shine by SD has some really expensive ones, you know, some of those Cleona, right? So I've definitely paid that. But now that I've tried these formulas and especially the mattes, I'm kind of like, dang, I might just get Muse. And then, you know, it's like, uh, for what's in there, like I would probably use those, like maybe I should just do it. Now coming back through here and looking and looking again at what I'm spending my money on, I'm kind of like, oh, hold on, maybe I won't. Maybe I won't, maybe I'll wait. The thing is, is 
there's no rush on this because none of this is limited edition, which I really appreciate. So just know as you're watching this video, like there's no like run, buy it, must grab it now. These are all part of her like existing collection, which I love. So you have all the time in the world to think about it. Does that mean that by the time you decide something, it might be out of stock? Yes, but it's not forever. So just know that no pressure going in. Oh, I, I totally just got myself on a tangent there. But what I was going to say is the thing, the big difference about some of those brands like the indie brands that have higher price shadows, they do have sales. They have sales at least twice a year, I would say. Lisa never has a sale. She never has a sale, so you're probably not gonna get it any less expensive than that. Like the best you're gonna do is get a complimentary holiday bag, at least right now. So I kind of wish that she'd offer some bundles of singles or like, hey, buy six singles on their own without a component and get a bit of a discount. I think that would be reasonable, even if she doesn't want to like sell the component on its own. I don't know, something like that. Like just like a bundle deal. So there you have it. That was a lot of thoughts. I can't even imagine how long this video is gonna be. And now I'm realizing since I'm gonna like wash this off and do all of this again, I could have been doing this entire video with more color on my face and some lipstick and some other things, but that's okay. <laughs> you're not here. You're not necessarily here to see me wearing a full balanced face of makeup. You're here for all the deets on Lisa's palettes. And I hope that I gave that to you. I hope that you found this helpful. You know that that's truly why I'm here. At the end of the day, I started this channel to be helpful and again, to keep beauty real. So. I want to again say thank you to all of you who stuck through this entire video. I appreciate you so much and I will see you really soon.